friends in this video we are going to study about the pressure measuring device bellows here we will study its construction its principle of working the various types of bellows and their advantages and disadvantages along with their applications so let us start with our topic bellows they are a type of pressure sensitive primary devices which are used for the measurement of pressure at the primary stage the bellows they use elastic materials which expand when the pressure is applied to it and this pressure is going is to be converted into a displacement and the displacement is proportional to the pressure so we can say that we are measuring the pressure with the help of bellows by converting it into displacement so bellows are used for the measurement of pressure and how they measure the pressure because bellows they are made up of the elastic material because so when the pressure is applied to the bellows the elastic material is going to expand or it is going to change its shape okay so due the change in shape of the bellows which is caused due to the pressure so by measuring that change in shape we can measure the pressure because the the shape change of the bellows will be proportional to the applied pressure so this is the working principle of the bellows that how they measure the pressure of the fluids so that was the principle which we have studied now comes the construction of the bellows the bellows they uh, they are a series of circular parts and these circular parts they are formed or joined in such a manner that they are going to expand or contract axially when the pressure is applied to them when pressure is applied on the bellows they are going to expand and when the pressure is released they are going to contract and come back in the Uh, earlier shape so the expansion and the contraction of the moving parts or the circular parts it is ex in the axial direction let's see the diagram of a bellow
so this is a bellow here you can see that it consists of circular parts which are joined together one over the other now when the pressure means the fluid whose pressure we want to measure it is allowed to enter from the top side into the bellows when this pressure or the fluid enters the bellows it is going to expand okay so when actually it is expanding okay so it's uh, it is going to expand in this direction and due to this expansion the pointer is going to move over the calibrated scale so pressure can be directly measured by taking it reading from the scale okay this scale is calibrated in terms of the pressure so the expansion and contraction of this bellow element is directly proportional to the pressure of the fluid now as you have seen that here the element of which the bellow has is made up of it is uh, it is to be an elastic material okay then only when pressure is applied it is going to expand and contract and come back to its original shape so the metals which are used for the construction of the bellows they must be thin enough so that they are flexible in nature if the material is very thick it is not going to expand and contract easily second is the metals should be ductile enough for the easy fabrication of the bellows and also the metal should have high resistance to the fatigue failure so that when it is expanded and contracted it does not break out okay so these are the requirements of the metals which are used in the construction of the bellows now materials which are commonly used for the construction of bellows are brass bronze brass bronze beryllium copper alloys of nickel and copper steel and monel so these are the materials which are commonly used for the construction of bellows now most of the bellows which are used in the pressure gauges they are made from the drawn tubing by using the methods hydraulic methods or other methods of the rapid forming now as we have said that when the fluid which whose pressure we want to measure it enter the bellow elements it is going to expand uh, the bellow uh, element so the displacement of this bellow is given by the formula
so the displacement of the bellow element which is caused due to the pressure applied by the fluid that displacement is given by this formula d equals to 0 0.453 p b n d square under root of 1 minus v square upon e t q where all these variables they are defined as d is the displacement p is the pressure which is in newton per meter square b is the radius of each corrugation radius means that here in the diagram you can see that these are all the corrugated parts or these are the corrugations so if we see any of the one corrugation then this is the radius b okay so B is the radius of each corrugation, N is the number of semicircular corrugations. Here, if we count the number, there are 5 corrugations. So number of semicircular corrugation is N. T is the thickness of the wall of the material of which bellow is made up of. D is the mean diameter. Here you can see that when we see the diameter, it is the D that is mean diameter of the corrugations for each corrugation we are going to find out the diameter and then we will take mean of it so d is the mean diameter e is the modulus of elasticity because the material of which the bellow is made up of it is an elastic material so for that we have to consider the modulus of elasticity and v is the poisons ratio so these are all the variables in this formula So in this way the displacement because here you can see that displacement is proportional to the pressure. So by measuring the displacement we can measure the pressure also. Now the bellows they have the ability to move over a greater distance than required in the pressure applications means the amount of movement which is required or the amount of displacement which is required that is more in the case of bellows than what is actually required. So due to that ability the bellows they uh, so in order to give the bellows maximum life and better accuracy their movement of the bellows the expansion of the bellows it is opposed by a calibrated spring so that only a part of the maximum stroke can be used so to because in bellows the uh, displacement produces in a very large amount so to uh, minimize or to reduce the amount of displacement produced so that bellows could have a maximum operating life and for longer time they can be used and they give us the accurate results so their movement is opposed by a calibrated spring and that type of bellows are called the spring loaded bellows. Let's see the diagram for the spring loaded bellows.
So this is the diagram for the spring loaded bellows. Here the pressure is applied. Okay. Now here in the middle you can see we are having the coil spring and around that we are having the bellows or the corrugations. Now this is spring in between it is connected with the pointer. Now as soon as the pressure is being applied here this bellows they are going to expand due to that spring is also going to expand or contract and the movement of the spring is uh, being connected with the pointer so pointer is going to move over the scale through which we can get the readings of the pressure. So in this way the pressure is being uh, measured with the help of the spring loaded bellows. So the deflection of the bellows in case when it is loaded with the spring it is given by the formula where D is the deflection of the bellows. is the pressure AB is the effective area of bellows and KB and KS are the stiffness constants of the bellows and the spring. B is for bellows and S is for spring. KB and KS these are the stiffness constants of the bellows and the spring. Now from this formula if we find out the pressure. So pressure P is equals to B multiplied with KB plus KS divided by AB. So in this way we can measure the pressure in the case of the spring loaded bellows. Now if the bellow is going to operate an electronic switch then in that case the formula will be changed. Then pressure will be equals to F plus B So this much part is being added where F is the force which is required to operate that electric switch. So in the case bellows is operating electric switch the formula will be changed. So these are the types of bellows like uh, the first type we have seen where the deflection is proportional to the pressure. The second case we saw when the bellows they are loaded with the spring and the third case when the bellows they operates the electric switch. So how the construction of the bellow is changing and how the formula is being changing we have seen here. Now comes that about the application of the bellows that how bellows are used for the measurement of pressure. For pressure measurement the bellows are used in three main configurations for the measurement of absolute gauge and the 
differential pressure. So let's see the diagram which is used for the measurement of these three types of pressure and let's see that how bellows measure these types of pressures. So this is the configuration of the bellows which is used for the measurement of the three types of pressure, absolute gauge and the differential pressure. In this configuration you can see we are having two bellows, bellow A and the bellows B. Okay. Now on one bellow we are applying the pressure P1 and on the second bellow we are applying the pressure P2. And we are combining the output of these two bellows and the pointer is attached to it and it is moving over the calibrated scale. Now let us see that how this configuration is used for the measurement of the absolute pressure. For measurement of absolute pressure, below B is evacuated. So out of the two bellows, bellow A is having pressure P1, bellow B is being evacuated so no pressure is being applied here. So the output which we are getting on the calibrated scale, it is the pressure P1 only. So in this way we can measure the absolute pressure. Now let's see how gauge pressure is being measured. For measurement of gauge pressure, the bellow B is open to the air. So bellow B is opened up to the atmosphere. So pressure P2 is equal to the atmospheric pressure. And therefore, the reading which we are getting on the scale, P1 pressure is there and this is the atmospheric pressure. So, the pressure which we are getting on the scale, it is the gauge pressure. So, reading of the scale is equal to the gauge pressure. Now, for the measurement of differential pressure, On below A we are having the pressure P1, on below B we are having the pressure P2. So the output pressure is the difference of these two pressures.
so the differential pressure p is the difference of these two pressure where below a is having the pressure p1 and below b is having the pressure p2 so in this way these three types of pressures absolute pressure gauge pressure and differential pressure they can be measured with the help of this configuration of the bellows so here you have seen that the bellows they can be used for the measurement of the three types of pressures now let us come to the uh, advantages and disadvantages of the bellows So the advantages of the bellows are they are simple and rough in construction, moderate price, their usefulness for measurement of low, medium and high pressure. So both type, uh, so uh, low, high and medium pressures they can be measured with the help of bellows. Also it can measure the three types of pressure, absolute gauge and the differential pressure and also the in the bellows there is less drift and hysteresis. Now, if we talk about the disadvantages, the disadvantage of bellows is that it is not suited for dynamic measurements. Also, they require a temperature compensating device and also in the bellows, they are having a greater mass and longer relative movement. So, these are the advantages and disadvantages of the bellows. So, in this video, we have studied about the pressure measuring device bellow, which measures the pressure by the expansion which is caused in the material of the bellows. We saw that how uh, the three types of bellows, bellows, uh, the simple bellow, the bellow which are loaded with the spring and also the bellows which operate the electric switch. And for that we saw the formulas also. Then we saw the configuration which is used for the measurement of the three types of pressure, absolute gauge and the atmospheric pressure. And in the last we saw the advantages and disadvantages of the bellows. So I hope that this topic is now clear to you. Thank you.